So today I want to talk about the SSL Sigma. The Sigma is a two unit remote controlled summing mixer that's built by Solid State Logic. So this unit can be used in a variety of different ways and it is really dependent on how you want it set it up. It can be used to automate inserts on a louder desk. So you could look at the, using this and incorporating this with a desk like a Neve 8068 or also thinking about like the, the SSL origin, like the new console where they've actually got um, a button on the fader which is like a zero dB. So you can actually also have this on the inserts and run 32 channels to that. The other way that you can actually control this unit is with um, a controller or a plug-in in your DAW. And just so to show you like an example of that, there's basically like three sections to this which we can actually look at. The first section is your main mixer section plug-in and this is actually how I have it set up for 95% of my tracks. I've got 24 channels on my alpha link converters and they actually feed directly into the first 12 stereo channels. The first thing to notice is there are 16 channels in total that means there's 16 stereo channels if you change a channel to mono what this will do it will actually favor the input coming on channel one and it'll discard anything on channel two then we've also got this routing section which sends it to either bus a and b and what i've generally done all the channels go out through to a and b if we were to incorporate the Sigma into an external desk, what we might look at doing is actually taking off the routing for A and B and just letting the signal pass through. And what that will do is it will attenuate the signal um, from what we've got onto the channels, onto the actual mixing desk itself. So we can actually use this as a pass through and not use the busing. The other thing with the plugin is I can solo and mute the individual channels that come out of the speaker. And I can also mute individual channels and automate that within the plugin. Once I've actually told the mixer whether I want the channels to route to, I've also got then what might be like your center section. So this is my mix bus control. If you notice on this plugin, there's two sets of buttons for mix A and mix B. And what this lets me do is actually automate and insert hardware external to the Sigma um, on and off um, within the mix itself or within the DAW project. I've seen some setups where they have like a hardware compressor going into that and then coming out so you could have like have the vocals on mix B, have your backing tracks on mix A and then you'd be able to kind of sit the vocals where you need them to. As it stands for my setup, what I'm tending to do is I've got an SSL bus compressor and that is actually coming in out of the Sigma mix outputs back into the converters. So it's actually happening after this and then this is almost like your center section sometimes what i'll do for the plugin i might have this in the corner of my screen and um, what that what that does then is i control the speakers i can change my inputs i can listen depending where i'm at when i'm recording i'm usually on mix a when i'm actually listening to my final mixes or like masters or external inputs i normally click my source to external input which is then routed through the patch bay to that at some point, I'm going to do a video about patch bays and how they can be useful. As soon as that goes live, I'll put a link up in the description of the cards so you can click on that as well. So this section I've just talked about now, this is like the, my input routing and then this is my monitor controller. The monitor controller is useful because then I can control my speakers and then if I click alternative loudspeakers, I can switch from my egg speakers over to my KRKs. And so I can switch from like one set of speakers the other benefit of the plugins, I've got control for the mono or the stereo image. I can also change the headphone source from, let's say, the mix to external inputs. And any changes I make on this plugin also gets shown up on the mixer in the actual rack unit as well. Um, you can connect the, the SSL Sigma directly into a Cat5 plug on your computer if you have it. If you're on a MacBook Air or something, you might need to get a Thunderbolt or USB 4 to Ethernet adapter. When I started, I initially had it set up to connect into the back of that. One of the issues that you could come up with that is if you do connect to the Cat5 connection in the network connections, you're probably gonna have to turn your Wi-Fi off and not be connected to the internet for that. It's a bit of a pain, but it's just to do with how like the systems talk to each other. On my setup, the Sigma is connected to a router, to the router. The Allen Heath is also connected to the router along with my Mac and a couple of other units. And the reason for that then is because I need I can control the Allen Heath off um, a headphone unit and I can control that off my phone, off an app. And then it also basically means that the internet routers then, um, they've all get their own IP addresses. They don't actually, in try and fight each other for space on the network. So that makes it a bit easier to kind of work with. With that in mind though, one of the issues that I've had in the past is when setting up the Sigma, it's not necessarily straightforward. It's one of the units you can't always just plug it in and it's gonna work automatically. You might need to read the manual and go through the process of installing everything correctly and also going through the initial setup. So on the settings, when I was setting this up, there was a couple of issues that I had connecting the unit and sometimes for whatever reason, the network connection will drop out. I have to manually go through and reconfigure of it. Generally the, the, the bits that I've been using is the IP address 
201. But those are the ones I normally set up and that's generally work, but occasionally it, sometimes it drops out and it forgets or something happens and I've had to go through and reset it. So once it normally, once it's actually kind of set up, you more or less, it's, it's been set and forget. So what I've generally had as well, you can set it up so your channels in, you can set it up so it responds to MIDI messages and you can also set it up to act as a controller in Pro Tools or Cubase, but it has to be the first eight channels of your controller. And it also means that say I had like a UFA, I couldn't kind of scroll through and change my channel, which would be a bit annoying. So I generally just leave it on Delta. So common questions that like people ask about the Sigma is there are 16 stereo channels. Does that mean that you can have 32 mono channels? The answer unfortunately is no. And this is just down to the design of the unit. In order to get control for both left and right channels in mono, um, that would mean actually doubling up on the MDAX, which were basically like SSL's version of the um, VCA or like more that what they used a more modern version of VCAs. Um, adding more MDAX into the system will make it more expensive. If you were looking at something like that, or, um, an option that you could look at now is Wes Audio and they do something called the NG Leveler. The NG Leveler is very similar to the Sigma, but I don't think it actually has summing capabilities. It doesn't have the mix bus option. So you would need to run that in conjunction with a desk, which could be useful again if you're looking at running this, if you're looking at running it as inserts for a console. Can you use multiple units in one DAW? This is something that kind of that I think got changed with regards to the firmware. So in the fir first firmware, SSL did come out and say that you could actually cascade units and set them up on your network, have them all going through to a router and you couldn't in theory actually have two units working together and then it might you might have to control it over like a MIDI or um, Huey profile. I think when they've updated the firmware to version 2, I think they've limited this now so you'd more, I think they're more or less saying that control one Sigma at a time. If I wanted to run another one i think the workaround that you'd have to do is you'd have to have a parallel operating system to actually connect in order to kind of have the two and then you're looking at the complications regarding rewire or using something like vienna ensemble to kind of connect through and get the automation have everything syncing up so there is a possibility of doing it but it becomes a lot more complicated a lot more tricky it's not straightforward but i have seen someone use a matrix and two sigmas to kind of come in with like in like a 72 channel mixer the ssl kind of sound which would be great but it's a bit more complicated to set up and you, you have to know what you're doing so then you can troubleshoot if it goes wrong the next one is can i run multiple doors with the sigma at the same time when i was setting this video up i was just testing some bits and pieces out so with the plug and control in logic you've got the option where you can flip the faders and you can actually flip the controls and control the faders in logic because i made using Pro Tools and I want to do a startup session like starting up and show how like routing and everything changes upon startup. What happens is the Sigma plugin will overwrite whichever plugin was open first that will actually act as the default and the other one becomes unresponsive and what will happen is it will say offline even though that the readings might get updated on the plugin it wouldn't necessarily mean it was actually communicating with the Sigma. So basically you can only have one DAW open running one session at a time. Can we control it with a control surface? If you watch my SSL UF8 review with Huey there is an issue with the Sigma in regards to controlling the plugins on the controls so this comes up with my units and one of the things at the moment with my UF8 is as I change the values and not getting updated if I do this in when I do this in Logic I have access to all the controls um, absolutely no problems whatsoever and I can actually use the faders to move the values up and down it's actually a bit better with the Mackie control and I think this is more to do with the Huey implementation than it is to do with um, the Sigma itself. One of the things that SSL did really well initially is with regards to the old Nucleus controller. What you used to be able to have is there was actual, you could have a dedicated layer for the Sigma on your Nucleus layer. You basically just press layer three, faders would come up and you could adjust it and you'd actually update on the, the mixes as well to control the automation. It's not been implemented yet in the UFA and it's something that I'm expecting to see in the near future. But one of the benefits of the Sigma, which I haven't really talked about yet, there is another channel that we can look at. If you were just setting up individual channels or masters, I could actually set up, so that I've got Duality, Sigma, AWS, and Matrix. So I can actually set up individual faders. So I go to Sigma and it'll lose the bits and pieces that I need. All I've got is cut, I haven't got root in. Say I had like another studio which had a duality in. I could set up a mix, kind of run it through on the, the mixer. And then there's options for actually being able to do mix prep work in a Sigma and then bounce it over to the duality. Possibly that you might look at going the opposite way where you might get some Vader values that you want on duality and then think oh, I'm going to be mixing this at home on my Sigma then that's where this could become useful is a single channel plugin which you don't really see too often I mean initially like this 16 channel plugin was 
wasn't available in version one. It, with regards to logic, logic couldn't write multiple plugin automation values at the same time. So what they actually end up doing is basically bringing in all the channels into one plugin. So all the fader values could actually get updated automatically. I'm using this now because it's easier for me just to see all the channels in one go rather than switching through and going to the right channel. The S1 can kind of flip and go into plugin focus mode and you've got control of the faders as well. So one of the things that I'm looking to do is I'm looking to expand in the future about how my Sigma grows. The way I'm setting up is I've got the, I've got my drums going out into five stereo buses and this just gives me a little bit of control over the fader values. Bass only coming out of 11 and 12 and I'm actually keeping them all in stereo so that it means that like, even though like the kick is more or less a mono source, with, I'm, I'm keeping them as stereo because when I, I kind of found out when I've actually flipped a mono for whatever reason, even though it is a mono signal, it just sounded a bit bigger and more present in the stereo mode. With snare as well, even though again it's a mono source, I might add some effects to it or three sets of the bass, the vocals, backing vocals, and I've got effects and keys. And my channel 23 and 24 is my parallels, which at the present time are running different versions of parallel compression in Pro Tools. If I wanted to in the future, I could actually add these on the patch bay, which I have got available. What I've actually got is I've got a template set up which I can load from here. So I go load, so I go documents SL, JC default, press OK. And then what will happen is you notice. So I normally have everything set up to minus five as a beginning point. As I as I build a mix, I'll normally end up turning up the kick and the snare um, after the converters, um, just to save on the clip in it and actually make it a bit more present. Got a little bit more room to tweak the settings um, happening after the conversion process. And when I mix in, like one of the things I'll do is mix bus compressor is actually more or less set, and that is going to minus four dB. And I said settings on that won't change. I've actually wanted to have the same settings each time. And what I'll normally tend to do is that will then come back into Pro Tools so I can actually hear what I'm recording in. I've got three channels on my master bus. So these will only actually get engaged right at the end of the session. So what will normally happen is when I load the session, I might bring them in, make them inactive. And then when I'm ready to record, I'll go make active, rename the tracks to what they need to be. And then I've basically got three recording channels. So the first channel is actually recording what's coming back from the Sigma and the mix bus compressor. So what I've got is I've got a Sigma mix bus and then that goes into the black box and the EQ. I was trying for a bit. I was using the Clark Technic EQs um, to kind of emulate that. And what I was tending to find is like there was the, the two Clark Technic units on their own sound great, but they're not balanced and like the, the volumes and stuff, there's too much of a discrepancy between the two. So I've actually bypassed them. I'm generally just using EQ now instead. So that'll then record onto the mix two. That'll record in and then that's just running through a really quick limiter which isn't really doing much, but just bring up the level, more or less a commercial level. What I'll tend to do with the master then is I'm just running a limiter on this on this channel, which gets recorded onto here. And I'd normally send, when I'm doing mix revisions and changes, I'd normally send this version of the mix as an MP3 to the client to listen to. If there's any issues for whatever reason with regards to this mix, the mix two, which is recording the, the two software plugins, I might also send a Sigma mix off to mastering engineer if I trust them. The, one of the good things about the Sigma is I've got this option for expansion. I'm really interested in the Wes Audio stuff at the moment, so like Prometheus, Hyperion. I really like those because they've actually, like they've got the recall ability as well. They can connect to the computer via USB hub um, or through their 500 series format with the GCon connections on the 500 series. I'm really interested in them because then that gives me the options of digital recall as well. And one of the things I love about the Sigma, what I can do is I can jump from one song to another and not have to work, try and recreate it. As we go with analog, one of the issues that we get is recalling the set previous settings that we've had before. So if you ever done session recall on outboard, it gets a bit more complicated with um, having to remember, having to write down the settings of what you had. So when I was mixing previously on the on the DDA, I might have 16 channels set up in eight stereo groups. And those 16 channels might be covering from the drums, the bass, the guitars, backing vocals or whatever. So I'd, be, I'd have them spread out and I might be making a couple of tweaks. I might have to mark down on the, like either on a desk or take photos and push in and kind of try and recall from there. When we're looking at the Wes Audio stuff, we can recall the settings pretty quickly. Like you basically open up a session, the plugin will automatically update. And with the Sigma, changing the settings is as easy as opening up a new session. One of the questions you're probably asking is like, how does it sound? Not really going to get too much of differences about mixing in the box and mixing out of the box, but generally what I'm finding is when I'm mixing with the Sigma, my mixes come together much quicker. They also sound a little bit wider and it's like for whatever reason a little bit fuller. It does seem to me that there's a bit of a mid mid range bump in the mixes that I'm giving. It's a bit more pleasing than when I'm trying to actually mix in the box. What I found with mixing in the box, I'm finding more issues with headroom and actually having to be more conscious of the gain staging, whereas my channels are actually being um, routed out to multiple channels, so I've got more headroom going out of Pro Tools, whereas with 
mixing in the box sometimes you've got to be really careful about the levels that you're setting and the gain stage and becomes much more important just when it comes back in i've got a bit more control about what i'm using so just in summary i'm finding that i'm mixing much quicker with this now that the unit's set up it more or less like sets up and works automatically the only issues i ever have is if i pack down this mac system over here and i move it i might have a bit of time just going through and reset it up i'm hoping in the future ssl are going to incorporate the sigma into the 360 and have a dedicated layer on their uf8 at the present time it's a bit of a shame that they haven't if you've got any questions about the sigma leave me a comment in the section below i'll get back to you i'll leave a couple of links about how i'm using it and i'll see you guys all again really soon thanks guys